Next question is from Arif Ansari from Uttar Pradesh, India. One of my non-Muslim friends has asked me, all religions are superstitious and false. The truth lies in science, which is constantly developing. Religion says that God is all-powerful, merciful and all-good. If that is so, then why do millions of children in the world suffer from hunger, cold, etc. As the great Russian writer Dostoevsky asked in his famous novel, Brothers Karamazov, why does God, who is said to be merciful, not have mercy on them and give them food, clothes, shelter, etc.? Why is there so much poverty, unemployment, malnourishment, sickness, etc. in the world? If God is powerful and merciful, why does he not abolish these and give everyone a decent life? The question posed by the brother is that one of his non-Muslim friends is saying that all religions are superstitious and they are false. Science is ultimate and is always developing. I agree with the brother that most of the religions they are superstitious and they are false, but not all. Islam, alhamdulillah, is based on haq, on truth. As far as science is concerned, if you compare science with the religious scriptures of the various religions, I do agree with you that most of the religious scriptures, they will fail the test. But if you compare modern science with Quran, you will find out that there is not a single verse in the glorious Quran which is against any established science. There are more than 6,000 verses in the glorious Quran out of which more than a thousand speak about science. And there are many scientific facts mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago which was discovered recently, 30 years back, 50 years back, 100 years back, 300 years back. Now who can tell us how come the glorious Quran 1400 years ago mentions about these facts in biology, in zoology, in oceanology, in embryology, in medicine, in hydrology, which we came to know recently 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back about water cycle that every living creature is made from water, how was the creation of the universe, the Big Bang and hundreds of things which science came to know recently 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back, 300 years back, the Quran mentioned 1400 years ago. How can you justify this? Out of more than 6,000 verses of the glorious Quran, more than a thousand speak about science. And not a single verse of the glorious Quran is going against established science. So if you compare Quran with modern science, Alhamdulillah, Quran is far superior. And science, as you rightly said, is developing. And many things what the Quran has mentioned, which science hasn't confirmed yet. But neither can it say it is wrong. Inshallah, in the near future, science will even confirm that. So Quran is far superior to science. But I do agree. If you compare with scriptures of other religions, all the other scriptures besides the Quran, they will fail the test. So Quran is a book based on haq, on truth. Quran is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, but it's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. It's a book of ayats. More than 6,000 ayats are there, signs are there, out of which more than 1,000 speak about science. Coming to the last part of the question, that why are millions of children in the world dying of hunger? Why is there suffering in the world? Why people are homeless? why people are in pain and suffering? The reply to this question is, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. This life in the world is a test for the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the human beings on the face of the earth, has sent us as a test for the hereafter. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 155, Surely we will test you with something of fear and hunger. 
with some loss of lives and goods and what you have earned through the toiling in the world and give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. That means Allah is saying every human being will be tested with fear and hunger, with the loss of goods and lives and your toils, what you have worked hard and accumulated. But give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. As I mentioned, this life is a test for thereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different human beings in different ways. Allah cannot have the same paper. The examination paper keeps on differing every year. So Allah tests different people in different ways. Some with wealth, some with health, some with poverty, some with diseases. So Allah is testing these people with hunger, with fear, with suffering. Do they yet have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are some people whose children are born handicapped. The children are masoom, they are innocent. But it's a test for the parents. So Allah tests different people in different ways. And depending upon how will you react? Will you curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will you get angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or will you say, okay, amanna saddakna, I accept it. So this is a test. Allah is testing different people in different ways. Nowhere does it say that a person who will suffer in this world will go to hell. Nowhere does it say that people who are poor will fail in the test. In fact, it is easier for a poor man to go to Jannah than a rich man. Allah is testing so if we have sabr, if we have patience, if we yet have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be successful in the hereafter. So since this is a test, the atheists will not be able to understand because they don't believe in the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for a believer, for a moment, he realizes that this world, the life that we lead in this world, is a test for the hereafter. And we are here to pass this test. So with this way, inshallah, if you have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey what is mentioned in the glorious Quran and the Sayyidid, inshallah, you will be successful in this world.